everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about tip number six and thank you for joining me. And uh, today is all about stress and how to potentially reduce your stress, but also to perceive stress a little bit differently. And just to kind of give you a little bit of a, of a background about how stress can affect you, um, you know, it's this kind of classic triangle that I like to, you know, explain to people because basically if you kind of envision this triangle, at the top we have something called our adrenals. Our adrenal gland sits right above our kidney and it's the first gland that will respond to stress in producing cortisol. And, you know, cortisol is great for us because it helps to motivate us. It keeps us going. But over time, it can get depleted. And so this is where we enter more of that kind of adrenal fatigue state where we feel tired. We feel exhausted. And so in order to compensate, it has to, you know, potentially pull from two different areas. So one side would be more of your thyroid, uh, where here we would look at more weight issues, you know, potentially dry skin cold extremities, just a slower metabolism, just a slower kind of body function. So you'll get even constipation, maybe sleepy, uh, you'll be more sleepy, more fatigue. The other side is where we're looking at more of the uterus and ovaries or even testes in men, where we have more of the hormonal issue. So this is where we're looking at estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. And so that's why a lot of times, you know, when you get stressed out, you know, maybe you don't even get a period because of this kind of direct effect where it's affecting your hormonal balance. And so you want technically estrogen, progesterone to be at that same level, but what ends up happening is one shifts over the other. And so you might get now progesterone dropping or, you know, estrogen might kind of linger up a little bit higher. And so then this presents more of this kind of estrogen dominance. Um, and this estrogen dominance can lead to different things. So for example, fibroids, cysts, um, you know, other menstrual irregularities or even infertility. And so stress can be a huge component of people's lives because obviously everyone experiences stress at some particular level. So it's all about trying to make sure that we are reacting to stress well, but we're also reducing our stress. So over the next couple of days, I'll also be talking about various things that you can do to kind of reduce that, um, you know, stress load and, and also how we take it into our body. And there are obviously other modalities that we're able to use. So things like rescue remedy or different Bach flower remedies, which I actually compound my own. So I can formulate that specifically for you, which is very individualized as well. Um, or there's other things obviously like deep breathing, which I'll talk about in, in a couple of days. Um, obviously exercise, you know, uh, meditation, all of these things can also help um, as well as even acupuncture. So I do a lot of acupuncture for people who have maybe some anxiety or depression as a result of this kind of chronic stress. Um, because keep in mind, you know, emotional suppression is what can lead to physical disease. And so now when patients come in with pain, anxiety, depression, we have to look at, you know, what emotions are they burdening inside? What are they keeping inside internally when we look at the stresses that they've been under? So I hope this tip helped you. And please feel free to take a look at my website at naturestouchnd.ca where I have a few blogs on stress that you can also read as well as downloading my ebook, which will also go through my top 10 tips that I'll be going over uh, over the next 10 days with regards to, you know, helping you over the Christmas holidays, but also into the new year um, in achieving your 2018 health goals. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.